24,000. And the Ari says, I mean, at number 24,000, what, you know, where, how does this figure work out? Of course, if we were not Kabbalists, we would say, that's what happened. But since we are Kabbalists, and that we believe there is a cause for everything that takes place, and the fact that we do not observe the cause, does not mean that there is no cause. Uh, this is not a random universe. Despite all of the uh, all of the indications that things go go wrong, thinking that uh, well, what did I do wrong and why did I do it wrong, etc. When in fact there is a cause for every action. And so, the Ari says, the word Elohim, the word Elohim, another name for God, but that name, as opposed to the Tetragrammaton, indicates this period in time. Period in time is what we call Katnut. In the Omer, we know that uh, the light, the light has been diminished and we are making every attempt from the beginning of the, the Omer since the light went away from the night of Passover. The light that created uh, Gula, freedom, that same light had to disappear because the Jews did not earn it. It was a gift that took place for a moment in time and then disappeared. And so therefore we count the Omer in the hopes of restoring the light that created freedom. And so that when we count these 49 days or 49 levels, hopefully we restore the light to its full brilliance and therefore immortality took place on Mount Sinai. So these days are referred to as Man of Katnut, diminution it's less and that is governed and these days are governed by the name of Kim, which means judgment harsh judgment therefore we have learned during these days we don't commence uh, uh, any new venture or moving into a new home or 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 marriage is taking place etc and because this Elohim can be can be uh, can have several different sequences in fact 24 in all like you have the word Elohim sometimes you have Aleph, Lamed, Keyud, Mem and sometimes you can have the Aleph, Lamed and always there's 24 different variation varia variations of combinations of this five letter word 24 different combinations all different and because of this of these different sequences of din of harsh judgment therefore the the number of students that uh, died in this period were merci mercilessly uh, mercilessly uh, put to death by uh, by the Romans is because they these students all came says the Ari their origins came from these different 24 different combinations different sequences of harsh judgment And why did it happen? And because they came originally from these 24 different combinations, Ayu Mekatrigim Visonim Ze Edze. 
And therefore, while their tikkun was to correct this, uh, this uh, idea of being judgmental and etc., and they did not fulfill their tikkun. Mind you, they were students of Rabbi Akiva, and they ultimately they wound up hating each other. Hating, says the Ari, and of course, the Talmud doesn't use such a strong word. The Talmud says they just did not have respect for each other. But can you mind you, these these were students of Rabbi Akiva, the highest soul that ever that ever uh, lived in this in this world. And this ended on the day of Lagba Omer, and because we have already learned the importance of of uh, this uh, this day, and therefore the 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 deaths that were supposed to be meted out all occurred prior or the first thirty two days. And since Rabbi Shimon was one of the five survivors of all of the 24,000 students of Rabbi Shimon, in this day, in this day, like tonight, hundreds of thousands of people gather around the cave of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Lazar Beno, Bimeron, in the city of Meron, Belamid Gimel Ba'omer, in the 33rd day of Omer. Anira Iti Lamorizal, Zesh Mona Shanim. And I saw that my teacher, this is Rabbi Chaim Vital, the student of the Ari HaKadosh, said that I saw my teacher come there uh, for, for, eight day, uh, for eight years that I knew him. Shalach im ishtov im beto. He went there with his wife and with his entire household. Vayasham gimel yamim ha'hem. And he was there for three days. Begam eidli. One of the students. Told me, says Rabbi Chaim Vital, Shashana Echad, Kodim Sheikati Oto, one year before I met my teacher, the Ari Kadosh, Shahala Sham Legalech Ed Beno, and he went there to, uh, to cut the hair of his son. Bemishte Uve Simcha Biyamimahim. And he said, that there is sheesh shorish, that there is a, uh, an origin and there, there is a basis for cutting of the hair of a three-year-old on Lamed Gimel Ba'omer. Vatam shemit Rabbi Shimon biyom lamid gimel ba'omer ki hu mitam idei Rabbi Akiva now and also another reason why Rabbi Shimon chose this day because all of the other students had died before and he was representative of the fact that he was not involved in this hatred towards any of the other students. And therefore, the fact that he was not involved, despite the fact that he had 24,000 colleagues who succumbed to this, uh, to this evil violation of, of hatred of one to another. And so, this is the custom, and we're going to uh, cut the hair of... Uh, Two, two little boys, two little boys, and just for 
just for a little uh, more clarity as to why we don't cut the hair for three years, because three years, three years, uh, we have learned in the Torah, three years is called Allah. And if the Adi said that we didn't cut the hair for three years, is because we understand, as I learned later on, that Karen was the one who brought me that information, that the uh, little fontanel, the little a uh, child, a little every child is born with a uh, with a little hole in the uh, in the skull, just covered up with the uh, skin, etc. And that the uh, hole, the hole becomes complete, is sealed by three years. And we're, I'm pretty sure that it's exactly on the on the on the third birthday of that little boy. And because this hair is act, actually acts as a protection, it acts as a protection. And therefore we let it grow because uh, as we know the hair is an antenna, etc. And so this is the reason why uh, we, we choose on Lagbomer uh, to cut the hair of uh, little children. And so we'll start with that procedure. And so the reason why we are all gathering here together with this little child so that we can lend that support to uh, strengthen, strengthen the, the whole idea of the brain and, and the head so that this little child uh, should have that much added energy tapping, of course, in addition the energy of Rabbi Shimon. Okay. But as we know, the fontanel closes at the age of three. But what, what's an interesting thing is that the top of the head is, is the seat of the master gland of the body called the pituitary, if you will. And also, it is the place of the pineal gland. And those of you that, that, that know or have studied understand that they say that all spirituality stems from the top chakra of the head, which is where the pineal gland is to, is to be. And if you read in the Bible, you'll see that it says that when they sanctified the uh, priests and when they sanctified the kings, they poured the oil from the top of their head down from the place of the fontanel, from the place of the seat of their spirituality downward, and also the tip of the thumb and the tip of the big toe. In reflexology, the thumb and the big toe of the right hand represents the spot of the pineal gland. It's just interesting that if we read that, when we read that in the, in the Torah itself, and they use those particular points, and those are the points and the seat of the spirituality of all people. And that's hopefully why he had to wait to gain his full vessel. And now, hopefully, we will create him through this cutting, a place whereby his total spiritual essence has now been formed, and now we have to create the ability for him to use that essence in our world by the help.